Yo, how's it going, everybody? Pretty sure... <clears throat> Pretty sure I'm live. My display is a little funky here, so I'm second-guessing myself a little bit. Somebody let me know in chat. Are we good? Oh, there it goes. That looks normal. It took a... I don't know why it was like... It froze. Thanks, Alex, Ian, Jason. Appreciate it. Yo, how's everybody doing tonight? You ready to open some... Open some packages? David. Boy, you know, how's it going, man? Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Hey, Jason. Let's see what we got here. <clears throat> this first one is from... This is from OTB. This is the Hurricanes. I think there's... I think I have three in here. Something about picking up in a chopper. What's up, Loki? How's it going? David, you gotta watch other people unbox to help... Cr yeah, hey, I'm just doing my... You know, I'm making the sacrifice here. Doing a public service. Yo, what's up, Stalnik? How's it going, man? You still, uh... Still playing some Escape from Tarkov on occasion, or he played some other shooters too, right? Millie, you got a gum putt? What's the. Uh, is that like a blowfly or something? Super flexy? Stalnik, no. <laughs> you're, you're done. You're done playing sh games? <clears throat> that happens. Okay, this first one is. Uh, Tour series, Shasta, Shasta Tour series. It is super, super uh, gummy. Like that's a very, very soft flight plate on there. It's all about the squall, Nicholas. I've not tried a squall. Hey Spencer, how's it going, man? He got to convince her that it wasn't it. it. You didn't have to spend that much money. This says 170, 72, but with how uh, pliable and soft the flight plate is, it feels like a lighter weight disc. This has got some nice... Uh, and this light is so hard to... This light's hard to work with for trying to show off discs. There's some nice swirls in here. Um, some white. Some nice white swirls. Yeah, especially right right in here. That feels really nice. Well, that's weird. The uh, the parting line on the rim is is right here. It's it's not all the way. It's not all the way like on the ed edge of the corner. It's slightly in slightly further. I've seen that on. I don't know, at least one or two other manufacturers, I believe. Well, this is like pieces from Discraft, or at least done by Discraft. Or maybe it's Discraft that has a lot that are right there. I'm not sure about that. HK, I do not know. Um, I do not know my firearms very well. I'm the wrong guy to ask about that. 
there's very few that I've got out and, and actually shot, so maybe somebody in chat. Antonia, the hurricane's very similar to the Zeus. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping. Okay, this one is more like a champion or shimmer style plastic. This is a tournament stamp. Delta Windjammers, Stockton, California. This one's a little bit heavier. 134, one, or uh, 173, 174 stickered on it. And it's got the OTB back stamp on there. This is a lot, f this feels a lot flatter than that first one, but it's still like I've got a pretty flexible flight plate. Same flight numbers, Antonio. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's right in that destroyer wheelhouse. HK, yeah, I'm going to do it in the bag uh, before too long. And then the last uh, the last hurricane I've got is another uh, Shasta Chris stamp. This one is also 173.74. I'm surprised how soft these are. These are super... This one's also feels very flat. Um, it's got like a little bit of co variation in the color there. Nicholas, you've got a bonsai with a windjammer stamp too. That that looks like a cool stamp. I like that. It's got the rainbow, the rainbow going on there. Antonio, I, these are the first DGA discs I've ever held, even I, I believe. I've not tried uh, Quake either. Hey, Froki, thanks for stopping by. I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? HK, nice. You got a. Signed putter. That's sweet. All right, and then this one is uh, uh, from Infinite. I'll have a couple M4s in here. These are, uh, oh, we got a little sticker. Infinite sticker in there too. Is the Mini and the DD Commander just a small Franklin RT Albatross? I don't know that I would recognize that. Uh, I don't know what the uh, mold looks like on, uh, on the disc you're talking about. I don't know what this is molded after. It says Zing on the bottom, that's all. I've just got it in there to hold that cooler flap open so the cooler dries. I keep putting ice packs and stuff in there. Quake is very similar to the Buzz OS. Sidearm approach. Interesting. Yeah, I've been using the uh, I've been using the drone for for that slot where where I want some extra beef compared to like forehanding a buzz. I've been forehanding buzzes some as well. I'm really trying to work on my forehand even in some more neutral mids and putters. Oh, you're Nicholas, you're talking about the stamp on there. Now that's a stamp from Solitude Open. Uh, Solitude Mountain Resort. That's their that's their logo. Is that that bird on there? Yeah, I got I got it now. Franklin does have something similar similar looking to that. Yes, I was warned about flashing, and these are sharp. Holy cow. That's going to take some... That's going to take some work. That is unfortunate. Nothing can ruin the feel of a really nice disc, like super sharp flashing. You've... HK's got a TI Flex drone. The drone is underrated. The drone has a little bit of weird feel in the hand, but I really like how the drone flies. Yeah, it's not, the flashing is not even, it's just like, oh, one, one spot um, where there's like a little bit of skinny flashing sticking up. It, it doesn't, like, the flashing doesn't move it's probably it feels like it, the flashing has a wide base and then it comes together like there is a chunk of plastic that needs to come off to get that flashing down
Hey Wiggers, how's it going? Talking about the Reco. I've not found the Reco. Jackson, what's the best neutral mid? Um, I, I've really been enjoying uh, Mako 3s, Comets, and Meteors. That's what I'm throwing for kind of the understable or, you know, neutral. Moment of silence for flashing. And if it gets the whole animal kingdom. Yeah, flashing is rough for you. What's the M4 similar to? Froki, I'm not sure. I haven't thrown these yet. I think it's a 0, zero. It's like 5400, zero, zero, something like that. So it may be close to um, like a comet, for example. I've not got my hands on a first run Hades, Antonio. I haven't seen any of those out there yet. Zach is calling out for the end of a coyote. So I had uh, somebody reach out to me on Instagram this week. They uh, sent me a private message. Just out of the blue, and I almost, you know, just blocked it or whatever. I've never got private message on Instagram. I figure it's some kind of a scam. But uh, this dude sends me a logo that he made. Look at this. I'm going to just slide this down so it's a little bit bigger. Look at this logo this guy sent me. Isn't that, look, it's, it's got Lola right in the middle of the mountain there. Do you see that? <laughs> oh, man, it totally made my day. I've been, you know, ha had a few ideas for making different logos and stuff like that, and, you know, I don't need anything. Um, but, you know, getting to that point where, like, some branding or whatever could be fun and trying to make some mini markers or, or whatnot, scorecards and stuff, so... I thought I was, I was super cool. I was way psyched to have somebody send that to me. Yep. So I am going to start. <clears throat> I don't, I'm not going to do, I really just need to go work on flashing and then start throwing these M4s. But the Hurricanes, I am going to do some data on them. Um, I've got a, a, a fellow reached out to me and is sending me a, a few more Hurricanes. Uh, so I'm going to have a, a stack of them I'm working on and uh, kind of do the same like Destroyer thing and start building some information on them. So I'm just going to start checking weights and get these up on the second camera. Look at parting line height and wing shape on these three and see how they look compared to each other. Free finger. I always rub this on concrete. Yeah, flashing is not fun. Concrete's a pretty rough way to do it, though. I found that like a um, a high traffic carpet or like you can just buy carpet in these little squares that are made to set down on um, st like stairs, stair treads or doormat style stuff. And if you push it down and just start spinning that disc back and forth, it generates so much heat that the flashing just kind of disappears. That's like the least kind of abrasive way I figured out. HK, you take showers with your discs? Did I just read that right? Oh, you sand them in the shower. Give them the old wet sand. Yeah, sure. Free finger, thanks. Yeah, I, I really like that logo. Antonio, what's my go-to disc during a round? Right now, I have been throwing a Meteor and a Plastic Addicts Habit. I've been throwing them a lot, um, partly because they're both newer. They're both newer in my bag. And that's how I really learn discs, if I just throw them a whole lot. They're, they're both good discs, and they may stay in my bag. But right now I'm throwing them on more shots than I normally would, just to kind of push them and make sure I learn them well. Nicholas, um, I, I review bags. If you uh, if you look at 
my my YouTube channel. That's that's how that's how it got started. Um, I buy bags, I test them, and then make review videos of them. And I've also done some reviews and stuff on discs as well. David, yeah, I have it super deep. It's it's a whole lot like a ultimate disc. Black, the Commander Cooler is going pretty well. I'm, pr I'm going to take it out for maybe one or two more rounds, and then I will record review for it. Um, probably, like, there's a chance I'll put the review out next week, but more likely it's going to be the first week in October, maybe, like, the 6th, something like that. I'll have the video out for the Commander Cooler. Summer in defeat, Doth is into bags. I do like bags. I've not tried a Discraft Rattler. I think maybe I have a Mayhem or have thrown a Mayhem. I had a stack of Octanes. I did a data set on Octanes and threw them a lot. Nope, no Bite or Sonic for me. I'm gonna grab my scale and get weights on these. Hurricanes. You have your eye on a condor? Yeah, I've got a condor sitting in the other room. They're unique. I don't know. Okay, so this is a special blend marked 173-174. And I just scaled it at 176. It has a few different stickers on it though that are probably making up for I don't know, maybe three tenths of a gram or something, so it's probably actually just a touch under 176, but it's definitely heavy. This one is also marked 173, 174. I don't know what kind of plastic this is. It's like star. One seventy four point eight seven. Free finger, yeah, I've been considering that. I think I can just stream from my phone quite quite possibly. Um but I certainly can do videos like that and, and post. I've got uh, po possibly just going to even, like I record myself throwing on occasion and do like, f you know, my own form checks. And uh, I figure why not just do some of that during a live stream. If you guys are interested in seeing me throw and seeing me try to f diagnose my own throw and what I can improve. HK, I've got a buddy who throws warships. I've grabbed him on occasion. Nicholas, I've got Castaplast, but it's not stuff that I've ever like really gone after and kind of tested and see if it can earn a spot in my bag. I'm pretty sure this is my favorite one. Just the way that it feels. It has the extra dome on it. It's a super soft flight plate. This plastic is really sticky. And it's going to be a lighter one, 170-72. 173.44. So it's still not, that's not light in my mind. That's still kind of a beefcake.
Dave P, uh, I did open the M4s. I didn't have a whole lot to say about them other than the flashing is disappointing. I mean, I was kind of warned about that. Uh, I just, it's hard to get, it's hard to get past that. Like that affects, that really affects how I feel about a disc. Just trying to, you know, first impression grabbing it that way. But otherwise I like to feel the plastic is pretty tacky and uh, it's super, super, has a really low profile feel to it. David, I'm looking for ways to identify um, the stability, what what spectrum of stability exists with destroyers or with hurricanes, for example. And if it's a big spectrum, then how can you figure out what you're buying before you throw it? The lots and the Caxi HK, yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, I might have to actually sand on these. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll get after them and see. I'll, I'll do the work and make them feel nice and give them a shot. I'm gonna kick over to my other camera and uh, get these Hurricanes sitting side by side. Oh, and gotta put the logo up there. Thanks, Nicholas. <laughs> yeah, we are getting technical on it. Let me adjust the focus on this camera. You can tell even with it being out of focus, we have some, we've got some crazy stuff going on with those two discs. Those are both hurricanes. And that's what I'm talking about, about, you know, seeing big variations in how a disc is molded up. How's it going, Chad? That's on slightly creepy, but I'll take that as a uh, compliment. We'll crank that light up even a little brighter. So we have huge difference in the parting line height there. And it's a little bit hard to tell about the wing shape. I'm gonna have to, I think if I lower that camera slightly, If I lower that camera just a little bit, we may have a better, little better view of the wing shape on there. Something changed about that, how high that camera is. That's the last thing you expected, Nicholas. Nice. I'm glad I can throw some surprises out there. Dark Mall 2, and then the, yeah, the PDs have been all over the place. Uh, well, I don't know. That's maybe, I'm not prepared to back that statement up. But there is a lot of variation in PD2s, or PDs, I'm sorry. Oh, higher than your FD3s? I don't have any indication that checking parting line heights from one type of disc, like a PD, and then comparing it to an FD3, that that's consistent. I don't, I'm not sure that there's a, 
any data to support that just like generically a higher parting line height makes the discs more overstable. Like I can go grab a Zephyr, for example, and be like, okay, well, the parting line height is like an inch high. That doesn't mean a Zephyr is overstable. And a LaCroix? Yeah, Nicholas. <clears throat> you betcha. Just popped open. Just popped open the water. What drivers had the most variation beside Destroyer? Um, there's some wild ones out there like Annexes or Onyx or whatever, you know, the Discraft Thunderbird is. Some of those are insanely different. Like the bottom stamp 1060s compared to like a current uh, Annex is, uh, they're a different disc. Like it's, yeah, it's hilarious. Dave, I uh, repair appliances, in-home appliance repair, kitchen and laundry stuff. I'm going to drop that camera a little bit. It might get shaky. Yeah, there we got a little bit better view of the wing. Actually, I probably could go even a little bit lower, couldn't I? Yeah, let me go a little lower. HK, yeah, Speed Queen is pretty hard to beat. Samsung definitely has some has some trouble. You're not wrong. Yeah, that's even better. Jackson, yeah, I like the guys at Birdcage. Uh, I, it's a bit of a drive, but if I'm, you know, going down that way to play Art Die or Jollies or something like that, I love to swing in and grab a couple of discs from those guys. They're awesome. So I've, this camera, this second camera setup, this is only the second time I've tried using it. And I got some issues there. I, like when I've done photos of discs like this in the past, I've got set up a jig and like figured out how I can make sure the discs are always in the same spots and make sure the camera is always in the same spot. And I've not got that in place yet. It's not that hard to do. But in order to like really get some good pictures and data from this, I got to get that set up. Because if I'm even off just a little bit left or right, it can change how they look. Like watch, I'll slide these. And that makes the red one look just like, so you know, huge. Just sliding it off to the side, like even a higher parting line height. and then go a little bit the other way and it almost, you know, starts to make them look even, so. <clears throat> so far that red one really does look like a beefcake. Like I can, from, from looking at those two discs, that red one is gonna be a hell of a lot more overstable than the pink one. Yeah, just sticks. Uh, MVP Voyager is on the list. I've had a little bit of contact with MVP asking him about that, and they're open to the idea, but you know our communication has kind of been laggy. So uh, I went ahead and jumped on some DD stuff right now instead. But uh, the MVP is. He's really probably next in line. I've got an old Voyager up here. The uh, little bit of green you see up in the corner, that's an old Voyager, which I still haven't carried, but definitely plan to. I've heard some good things about the new Voyager bags. Sean, how's it going? Hey, I'm glad to hear you picked up a skinny too and that you love it. I think that's a great bag. Jackson, yes, I'll do the Rebel soon. 
Um, it uh, so I've got two commander bags. I'm just about done uh, testing the commander cooler, and then uh, I'm gonna carry this one a bit as well, the normal commander. I may do the rebel. Probably will do the rebel there Im immediately after. DD is also sending me a ranger, and uh, I'm not sure timing on that, but if that comes in, if the timing's just right, I might do the ranger instead of, or the ranger before the rebel, but we'll see. All right, I'm gonna kick that red one out of there and throw the purple one in. I hope that the purple one is lower parting line height. Ooh, those are, those just look like twins, don't they? All right, nothing wrong with that. So the red one's really the outlier. Uh, we'll do, yeah, they look super close. They'll change a little bit if I slid them left or right, um, but they look, they look way close. Yo, what's up, Sep? How's it going, man? We're playing with some hurricanes. Let's see how tall. I think that the dome on that, the purple one on the right, I think for sure is gonna have a good chunk higher dome, taller, whatever, than the rest of them. Hurricanes. Damn straight, Sep. Chase, is the AX4 the best bag in the 250 range? I, uh, I really love the Ridge V3. That's the last review bag that I just popped a review out for. It is a, a little more expensive. It's like 279, but for a lot of things it offers, I think it's a better bag than the AX4. For one, it's got a seat. Like it's, eh. um, but on the downside, it's, it's quite a bit heavier than the AX4. If you haven't looked at the Ridge V3 and you're looking at bags in the $250 range, you gotta check it out. You gotta check out the Ridge. Watch my video on that. What's the best bag around the same size as the DD Commander? It's hard to say. I haven't tested a whole lot of bags that are, uh, I don't know. I feel like the Commander is doesn't hold a lot of discs, but that's because I've been testing the cooler version of it, so. The Ridge comes with different color stitching. The fabric is the same color. HK, yeah, Ranger may be great. I, I think I've got one coming uh, in, a, in the next few weeks. So I'm gonna pull this camera back a little bit and raise it so that I can do the uh, height measurements. Let me move my camera so you can see what's going on. Whoop. Come up here in the middle. Counter stripe, yeah, it's it's worth this that ridge is worth a solid solid look for sure. It it really is a great bag. And I gotta tweak the focus on that again. Focus on this camera is so weird. That's got to be close. Hopefully, you'll be able to see the see the readout. <laughs> Jackson, you've watched the Octo Hall video four times. Scorecard parking are not worth it. 
Um, I mean, what do you, Jackson, what do you envision yourself using the scorecard pocket for? What do you think you might put in there? Oh, Nick, Nicholas, you're thinking if you find some, some weeds on the fairway, like some invasive species weeds, you can pull them out. Yeah, that's not a bad, that's not a bad idea. I don't know if the ridge will fit in the standard Zuka backpack cart. Yeah, wild or whale sack could work. You've got a lot of other options for places to put those things. Yeah, the strain is named invasive. Drew, if you send me grooves, I will test them, okay? Not before then. Chase, the problem with the, or the reason that pound is limiting is because they do not want people to have to wait like 13, 14 weeks to get a bag. They want to keep their turnaround lower, like near the eight week mark for custom bags. And I think that they're not willing to expand rapidly and potentially lower the quality of their bags. They're like literally only able to churn out a certain amount per month and more people than that are ordering. So they're limiting the order so that they can keep their production up. Okay, so this one was 18.40 millimeters tall. I'm thinking that's the tallest one by a good chunk. We'll do, I think this one might be the flattest. We'll slide it right under that bar, see how much room there is. So yeah, that's a decent visual representation of the difference in, in height on those two. These are the two that had the same parting line height, or extremely close. They basically looked identical. And I've heard a couple people recently say that the dome is directly related to parting line height on different discs. And I disagree with that. The number of discs that I've tested just don't don't show that to be the case. And, and here's the perfect example. We've got two hurricanes where like the rim looks exactly the same, the parting line height looks exactly the same, and the dome is off by a, a good margin. I don't know, two, three millimeters. We'll pull it down and see exactly where it's at. Nicholas, yeah, I definitely would. If the wing looks the same and the parting line looks the same, then the one with a taller dome is more stable, more overstable. But it also gets more glide. So those, those are the two things that dome does for you. If everything else is equal on a distance driver, then the higher the dome gives glide, 
and stability. D to the G to the triple A. Big Red, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm pretty sure I like it. And then this is a super high parting line height. It's gonna be just, I think, a touch taller than the pink one, we'll see. Yeah, that one's right in the middle. So I'm pretty psyched on this. I, I really like this purple. It's the one that feels the best in my hand, and based on the measurements we've just done, I think it's gonna also be a really good thrower. Dave saying, I always thought, seemed to notice, a greater dome exaggerates the disc's understability or overstability, as well as more glide. I, I've not found that to be true, Dave. Big Red, yep, I think Tyler's doing a great job. He's getting a lot of media out there. For sure. I've been hanging out in some of his streams. That's Watching his is partly why um, I decided to kick up some streams. The parting line height, uh, you know, like on two hurricanes, one has a higher parting line height than the other. I don't think you're going to see any difference in the in the rim. Sep says all hurricanes are great throwers. Okay, Sep. Yeah, Sep, I saw your picture of all the one di one of each of the DGA discs in production. That's pretty impressive. You should do Anova next. Another yeah, DGA only has 22 molds set by, yeah. Innova has a few more, a few more than that for sure. Chat after the hurricane, what's your next distance driver mold to test? I don't know. I don't have a... I'm not like really lining those up. Um, I. What I really want to do cost too much money. I need to do some some fundraising stuff.
Except we did this before you stopped by. Um, these are both, these are two of the three hurricanes. This red hurricane I got is a beefcake. It is super tall. Nicholas, I don't know how to pronounce that disc, Svei, uh, from Castaplast. I didn't know that they had a new disc coming out. Do you know when it's releasing and what its numbers are supposed to be? I have thrown KC 11 time uh, T-Birds. In fact, I think I still have a couple of those but I've not thrown them in 150. Like that plastic definitely feels good. Big Red, somebody is sending me an SP Flex cane. I'm pretty psyched. He's sending me three, three used hurricanes. One of them is SP Flex. I can't wait. Five, six, neg one, zero. Oh, okay. I thought maybe that was, we were still talking destroyer clones or high-speed drivers. I like those numbers, though. I love the high-glide neutral discs, that's for sure. No release date yet. Yo, yo. Hey, Gnome. How's it going, man? We're looking at pictures of discs. This is just right up your alley, for sure. Gnome, check out this logo someone made for me and sent me on Instagram. It's got my dog in there, Lola in the corner. <laughs> oh, man, I was so psyched. That totally made my day. I have, like, a few ideas for logo stuff, but I haven't... <laughs> right. <clears throat> Chat message number two. They still don't know I'm an imposter. Yeah. Sep, yeah, you're not you're not wrong about either of those. I'm curious to pull some destroyers out and put them up against these uh hurricanes and see how they look. Joseph, you're welcome. I'm psyched to uh hear you got an Octothorpe. That's a, that's going to be an awesome bag. Did you order a custom one and you got to wait? Um or did you get one of those uh that they just restocked? Yeah, rangefinder pocket. Uh, I th I don't know. I think the numbers are twelve four neg one two. Alex, I assume they're right in the destroyer. Destroyer area. So I'm guessing that these are like if we're to compare them to destroyers, they're gonna be in kind of the middle stability of destroyers. So here's the two, two of the destroyers that I've been throwing the most right now that are both kind of middle stability. Neg one, three. Oh, for a destroyer, yeah. But that's the base for destroyers. Destroyers are all over the place. Joseph, you got a pre-made Octothorpe? Awesome. Currently rocking a Grip CS. Oh man, you got so much bag coming. It's gonna be sweet. Nelson, yeah, I've messed with uh, Octanes and Photons. And they still have a lot of variation in how tall the dome is, but their, their wings are, are super consistent. So this, the red one, these are both Halo Destroyers. What exactly are we talking about? Uh, we're kind of all over the place right now, Joseph. The two picture, the discs that we're looking up in my second camera are DGA Hurricanes. I just unboxed some Hurricanes, uh, three of them. Here's the third one. 
And we're seeing that, like in the picture that we're looking at, uh, in that camera over there, the this red hurricane is has a way taller than the purple one, so it is likely way more overstable. I'm going to set some destroyers up next to them and see how they look. Sep, I thought that the halos were going to be super stable as well, but like this yellow one was the first one I handpicked, and I got the one that I thought was going to be the most understable, and it crushes, man. It it really is a nice. Yes, some some of the halos are are very overstable. They're pushing the top end of stability, but not not all of them. Don't think just put just pit. What's up? Oof, that's a beefy destroyer I've got up there. So you can tell that like the the angle on the wing on the destroyer is is way more convex. And that's a that adds stability also. Alex, I gave all those enigmas back to my buddy who lent them to me and uh we did play one round but we didn't we didn't get a chance to throw. Sean, uh, the only halos I've tried are destroyers. So I can't really answer that question. The Red Hurricane, yes, it's SP, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it says special blend on a sticker on the rim. Oh no, my GoPro just overheated. We're going no face cam until my camera cools off. Don't think just put, how do they compare to forces and destroyers? How does what compare to forces and destroyers? Enigmas? Sean, I think you're talking about the my video. I made a video a little over a year ago all about the destroyer rim, rim curvature. That was me. The dome on that hurricane, it is, I think that hurricane is flatter. Hey, Tyler. How's it going, man? Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, you're welcome, Sean. For sure. Hey, <laughs> Tyler's in the house, but where is friends? Sep, <clears throat> that's you, buddy. That's you and me. And Suedo. <laughs> What's up? How's it going, Suedo? I'll put an even beefier destroyer up there. Well, it's still not that tall. The whole world is Tyler's friends. I believe that. A limited edition Dothsavik Octo Hall. I wouldn't hold your breath. I've not had any contact with the pound guys. <laughs> yeah, the one, the one. There's one guy in chat. That destroyer looks like a groove. Yeah, that destroyer is nasty. The the wing curve on that is. Uh, super concave. I'm gonna go pop my GoPro in the freezer. I'll be right back.
Ooh, those look, those two look quite close, huh? That's one of the main destroyers I'm throwing right now. Joseph, I am switching bags like crazy right now, testing a bunch, so there's really no standard bag for me. Rim widths look different. Uh, yeah, that could be the case. Yeah, Joseph, I'll do an in the bag soon. Uh, Nelson, yeah, I mean, I've not played with DX destroyers to like really see what else is going on with them. But, you know, if you find a stack of DX destroyers and you're using parting line height to pick which one, and you get the one with the highest parting line height out of that stack of DX destroyers, it is very likely to be the most overstable out of that entire stack. The only exception would be if the one that you have with the highest parting line height is pretty flat on top, and there was another one with just a little bit lower parting line height, but it has like a monster pop top dome. That extra huge amount of dome may overcome and make it a more overstable disc than the one that had the little bit higher parting line height. Weight also comes into play. Like if the one with the highest parting line height was, a, you know, 137 grams or something like that, and you had one close, like a little bit lower parting line height, but it was 175, you know, like again, that you got to take in those other, those other data points. You can't just go by parting line height, but it is a really strong indicator. I cannot wait to throw that purple hurricane. That thing is gonna be sick. Tyler, so what I have right now is just a uh, my old webcam. We're looking through a C9, a Logitech C922X. And I have it on a little, you know, a 10 inch tall tripod. And then there's a, like a desk, just a wood plank that's sitting up. And I just keep stacking stuff on that, under the tri tripod, uh, pieces of cardboard and pieces of paper to get it to just the right height. HK, no OnlyFans yet, yeah, I'm working on it. The issue with what I have set up right now, Tyler, is that like you need a, a jig in place to make sure that the camera stays in exactly the same spot and that the discs are gonna sit in exactly the same spot. And I'll show you why. What, look what happens with these rims as I slide them left and right. I just do that and like the, the profile goes, goes crazy on them. So like it's, it's really important to have a, a jig to make sure that they stay in the same spot. So what I've done in the past to solve that problem, you've got one dedicated tripod and, yeah, <laughs> an easy button. Well, the yeah, the best tip that I can give you is to take, like I just use these little sticky back um, wire keepers, you know, that you would, you know, take the paper off and stick it to the back of your desk and then run wires through it. Something of that sort. And I figure out where I want the discs and then I just stick those things straight to the tabletop in a couple different points to hold the, you know, so that I can slide the discs up and just bump them straight into it. Chase, I don't think anybody shows rim profile pictures. But you can get 
you know, there's a couple out there like uh, OTB and Disc Baron where they will give you, you know, some indicator of how much dome is on the disc, whether it's tall or flat or, you know, mild or something like that. So there are guys out there that'll give you other data points, even if it's not necessarily profile pictures of the wing. Yeah, some of these today were from OTB. Uh, the the hurricanes, these three hurricanes were from OTB. All right, I think my face cam is probably cooled off about it. I'm gonna go pull it out of the freezer. I'll be right back. Oops, I connected the wrong cable to it. Did it work? Oh yeah, we're back. It totally worked. So I'm going to pull up my other my other destroyer that I'm throwing a whole lot right now is this super old Star Destroyer. Um, this thing has been around. This thing has been around forever, and I retired it because it is an ace disc. I aced with this thing in 2008. Uh, it has been. It's a star. Yeah, pinned Star D, 170 grams. Just beat beat to snot. It's a crazy, yeah, pre-flight number. It's crazy straight. It's like this unique, you know, um, it's still like pretty resistant to turn, so I can mash it and it'll hold pretty straight. And then it's just like had the fade beat out of it. It just flies, it flies straighter than destroyers should. Let's sit it next to this purple hurricane and see how they look. Something looks a little bit off there. Jackson, I started playing um, when maybe, I don't know, my dad had me playing. The first time I was on a course throwing a disc was like five years old or something. Hey, Tall, how's it going? Tall Void. Yeah, Tyler, for sure. I'll, I'll, uh, depending on when you start your stream up, I'll pop in. That destroyer next to the red hurricane would be frightening. Yeah. Sep was also just a youngster when he started. Yeah, there's that, there's the red hurricane. It is raggedy. It's been around the block like hundreds of times. 
beat to stop destroyers are nice. Yeah, I can pull more some more destroyers. I've got some anomalies here. There's a pretty overstable Halo Destroyer on the left, the green one. And then the yellow you can see is like f either completely flat wing or e uh, if I rotate that yellow, you can see it's actually uh, convex on certain parts of that wing. Destroyer on the right is on the extreme end of the understable of the understable destroyers big red 3d printing some radius gauges i don't understand how a radius gauge is going to be helpful uh, somebody was talking about that in my last stream and i ordered one i've got one here So I've got a five inch, a five inch radius gauge. And I just don't, I don't understand how this is gonna be useful. Like the, you know, I, I guess the theory is you would do, you would do something like this to pop that down. And then you can lock it in place and that's, you know, showing off the, the shape of the wing, but what are you what are you going to do with that data like for one thing depending on how wide each of these little pieces are it you know it's it's not giving you like a perfectly flat and even line for the wing and what i'm going to do lay that down on a piece of paper and trace it and then do it to another one and trace that line as well so then we have like a 2d representation of the angle of the wings but it's really like how are you going to how are you going to decide what what angle you're going to push that down at? Um, like if you if you just lay the disc down, depending on how much dome that disc has, it's going to sit at different angles. So it's really weird to try to support a disc, multiple discs in an identical way, and and then also come at exactly the same angle. Big red. Oh, you were thinking of semicircles like a protractor. Okay, I'm not on the same page then. But this is this is what called a radius gauge. I believe. Maybe it has a different. Maybe this does have a different name. A radius. Yeah. Is it? Calvin's tour series are extremely overstable. I don't think he's having trouble getting overstable, finding overstable destroyers. There's another crazy understable one. Uh, yeah, Nelson, I'm sure they do. They've got it figured out. They know how to, you know, walk into the warehouse and, you know, finger through a hundred different destroyers and be able to pick out a couple that they know are going to fly just how they want.
Those are the two M4s I got. I thought I'd just pop them up there for fun. I've never really seen differences in parting line height or wing shape on mid ranges. We might see a difference in the height on the dome on those though. They both feel the same. They both feel super flat, those two M4s. But it is possible that there's a difference. Sean, yeah, I do believe you're correct. Nelson, I don't know if uh, Champion Go Plastic is generally more overstable than normal Champion for Innova. I really couldn't say. You know, Firebirds would be the first thing I'd go to that I've thrown in both of those plastics. And there's other factors in that make a bigger difference in the stability of a Firebird rather than what plastic it's in. I've got those slightly off center. Let me tweak them. That's that blue or purple, purple hurricane again on the left. Anybody got an idea what disc it is? I set next to it on the right. Those look super close. Yeah, I've never thrown a groove. Nicholas, you are correct. It is a Zeus. That's the my most thrown Zeus sitting on the right there. It's green. Yeah, it would be interesting to test some grooves. I never like really thought about it, Drew. In shrikes, you see a big difference based on plastic, even though they look the same. Yeah, that's interesting. Certainly could be. Certainly could be the case. Generally, I think what you're getting with different plastics is that they have different shrinkage rates. So they deform discs a different amount while the plastic is cooling. You second the groove idea? Can you even buy grooves anymore? Are they still out there? I guess I can look. Josh, I do have a I do have a streamlined trace. I've oh, maybe only thrown it a couple times. How's it going, Skip? How many days a week do you I play? Um, that that depends. I'd like to I you know I've played as much as like every day of the week in the past, but I can't really stay healthy with that anymore. So a lot of times it's it's two to three times a week that I'll get out. Uh, it's m more if I'm in town for a weekend. P. McBee said grooves were like beat in destroyers. You pawned a groove off on a new player.
do high. Solid mustache, bro. Thanks, man. Let's see if Infinite has any grooves. Yeah, they have 71 grooves in stock. They have a bunch of champion tie-dye. Should I do it, chat? How many, how many grooves do I need for a good sample size? <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio wants to do a biopic of you. <clears throat> are you his are you his agent? Five grooves. I need four grooves. Somewhere between four and five grooves. Jariah, you're welcome. Thanks for popping in. <laughs> four and a half grooves. Yeah, they do have X outs. They're only ten ninety nine. <laughs> Send it. <clears throat> you guys are so bad. We need to crowdfund this. This is why I need to set up like a little don't. You can each give me like fifty cents, and we'll see what that piles up to, and I'll just buy grooves with it. Don't do it. Grooves are garbage. I don't doubt, I don't doubt their guard. Sep thinks I need at least eight grooves. Yeah. Honestly, when I'm doing tests on the, you know, the destroyers or destroyer clones, I, I've been trying to go for like eight to 12 of them. If I'm going factory seconds, I need five. Somewhere between four and eight. We're gonna hook up with the retailer and see if they'll give a bunch for testing. Yeah. OTB has helped me out a good a lot in the past. But I know they're they're kind of going through some stuff. I think they shut down their brick and mortar store. Um haven't heard from o or uh Disc Baron, sorry. I was doing some stuff with Disc Baron. That's what I meant to say. But they he shut down his store. Chat won't be happy until this is a dedicated groove review channel. Yeah. I I can see this coming, yes. Ten grooves. Sep, yeah. I think for science. Oh you guys I'm gonna buy a hundred dollars worth of grooves. What happens if I just like fall in love with the groove though? I guess that would be best case scenario since I would then have 10 of them. At least when I'm buying discs in a batch for testing, I'm always like, I'll be able to sell some of these afterwards and like, you know, recoup like 60, 70% of what I spent on them. I don't think I'm gonna be able to resell the grooves. Take out a small loan for grooves. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I make a fake video about how great grooves are. Try to buy buy out grooves everywhere that I can and then make a video about how awesome they are. Sep, I feel like the, um, I mean, the Destroyer is such like an epic disc. And there's like, there's a reason that pretty much every manufacturer tries to make a disc that are this, that's a very similar flight numbers to the Destroyers. It's just like the ultimate distance disc. And it probably always will be. 
um, you know, either the destroyer or a clone of it. And especially with how much variation there is and how Innova makes destroyers, I think it's really interesting to look at and see, you know, like if DGA has got the hurricane, how much variation is there in hurricanes? Like, is, is there a manufacturer out there that's like, that's totally nailing it and putting out like a super consistent version of the 12.5 Neg 1.2 or Neg 1.3 or whatever. And if there is a manufacturer that's putting out a super consistent one, where does the one they're making fall within the spectrum of the stability of all the others that are out there? It's like a little bit weird for me to do that though because I can barely throw hard enough to get, you know, 12.5 Neg 1.2 or Neg 1.3 discs to fly like they should. Sell a kidney for grooves? I think I could get a lot of grooves for one kidney. Yo, what's up, Wyatt? Yeah, the 12-speed rim size is pretty comfortable. Uh, HK, I have a uh, very repeatable 400-foot throw straight. I can throw 400 feet pretty, you know, with a pretty straight shot. Once I start throwing turnovers and flexes and stuff like that, I can, I can reach out further. But things start getting wild. Uh, Sean, because in golf, it's not just about what goes far, it's about what's repeatable and consistent. And a nice, repeatable, consistent distance disc probably won't ever hold the world record. Yeah. Set by here. I, I've got some more hurricanes coming in. Uh, three more. Um, three more in different plastic. So uh, I'm excited to get some duplicates in the same plastic and see how they stack up. Fix the camera angle. Oh, on the discs, it's slightly crooked. You got it, John. Just for you. Which way does it need to go? Right side up. Did I nail it or what? Is that to your liking? Yeah, littlest things. I'm I'm sure that some people were would definitely just get, drop some cash. Nailed it. Awesome. Thanks, John. Uh, I don't know. I'm still on the fence about that. Like, I set up a Patreon page, and then I didn't tell anybody about it, and I took it back down. Because uh, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure how I feel about that. I'd like to be able to offer, you know, offer something to anyone that's willing to support me. I don't know. That yeah. I have no idea what a groove would do. I'm sure there's some around. I could probably ask on the local group in Facebook and get some get some grooves. Offer one of my shirts. Dude, I don't know how many grooves would I have to take and trade for the shirt I'm wearing right now. Some mustache wax.
Right on, Sean. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you later. Zach, yeah, you're a little bit late. That's right. We'll put a VOD up. You can come in and check it later. I'm not done just yet, though. I just threw up a couple more destroyers. So the one on the right, you can tell, is just beat to snot. And it is, like, w way far on the understable side of the spectrum. But the one on the left, which I've not thrown, has, like, a really similar wing. It's maybe not quite as bulged out and convex, but the parting line height is extremely similar on those. But what I want to show you on these two in particular is the is the dome. So keep in mind that these are both like crazy understable on the wing side. The parting line height is the same I'm going to pull the camera back and move it up just a little bit, and I'll show you the difference on dome between these two destroyers. I know the focus is off, and don't, don't worry, John. I will correct that camera angle for you as well. Let me get the focus on it first. So if you've watched me measure the height on dome on the hurricanes earlier, or... In the last video when we were doing Enigmas, you saw some in the 17 and 18 millimeter range, and that is quite tall. This destroyer is 19.47 millimeters, and I need to tilt to the, uh, the disc needs to go up. Kinda, kinda close. That was slightly off, not quite in the dead center. Yes, this this red one is like a true anomaly for destroyers. Like it's not that hard to find a bottom wing that's very flat on the destroyers that are being put out there right now. Uh, I haven't looked at like the Saki bot stamped ones. I'm not sure quite how those are coming out, but look at this compared to like that that pink one that I had. Well, I'm gonna pull this red one out and slide the pink one under so you can see the difference. It's crazy. Like this is commonly what you get if you find a wing that's really flat and understable, then it tends to be a pretty flat destroyer as well. It's like the wing shape makes it on the un understable end of the spectrum. And then when it's flat on top, it becomes even more understable, but then you lose, you lose a lot of glide. That's what makes that red one so special is all of the glide that you get with that super pop top dome.
that's well more than three millimeters difference in height on those. It's crazy. That red one is a bomber. And I've, I have a few like that. Every time I'm searching through a stack of destroyers and I find one like that, I, I pull it out. Uh, they're just, they're wild. My pants are squeaky. It has like multiple tiers to the dome. It's got like a shoulder in here. So it's like already going up for a tall dome and then at that shoulder, it just really, really pops up. It's got a solid heartbeat to it. It's a bottom bottom stamp one. Living in the UK, it's just nuts to think about a literal pile of destroyers to feel instead of buying random ones online based on weight. Yeah, that's that's a tough tough one, Nelson. You know, that's why if you look at OTB or Disc Baron, something like that, they they at least tell you if it's flat or domey or pop top, give you some more indicators on it. Yeah, I hear you, Sep. That's why you bag zero destroyers. Uh, yeah. Yep, there's a there's a huge trade-off with that on those destroyers. Part of it's great that they have so much variation. You also bag zero Innova. Yeah, destroyers and firebirds are the only the only Innova discs that I've bagged in right now. I could go full I could go a full Innova bag though. It wouldn't be very hard for me to do. I think most most brands I could go with a full full bag from them. T-Birds, Wraith, and a Sonic are your only in of a Nelson. That's, yeah, that's a cool combo. Thunderbirds were the last one you pulled out, Sep. What'd you put into that slot? What replaced it? Nicholas, yeah, rocks are great. I've thrown a lot of rocks. Zach's also got zero Innova. Sep is 85% buoy boy. Bonsai's took over Thunderbirds. I, I know DGA so little. I would have guessed Bonsai was a mid-range. I don't know. What plastic is this one, Sep? It's like a, it's, it looks like Star or ESP. Uh, well, yeah, Discraft, right? So it's e, it is, it looks like ESP. What plastic would this be called? I for, oh, actually, I can just look at my receipt. Bonsai is an eight five zero three. It's a cross of a Thunderbird and an Eagle. I could dig it. I'd really depend on the how the disc feels in my hand. Pro line. Okay. That makes sense. Do you think the purple one I have is well, whatever. I'll I'll look at my uh I'll look at the receipt of it and see. SP is translucent. Yeah, that red the red one is SP.
it's got like a yeah you can see like these shimmer waves in it uh, it's kind of like a luster shimmer type of uh, plastic but it even has a sticker on there special blend Regular Pro-Line is similar, but less flex. This one must be Pro-Line as well. It's a little bit lighter weight, but it has more dome. It's super, it's super soft. This is, this is my favorite of these three by far. Okay, Littlest Things. I like it. Some things that I think would be a good option for Patreon are raffles for free stuff that get sent to the Patreon, patron. Top choice in what you review next. I like that idea. Exclusive live streams, pins, patches, stickers, etc. I really like the idea of getting a uh, say in what's reviewed next. DGA plastics are a little different than Discraft. It's not one-to-one. -one. Okay. Oh, I've got Shasta from different years. Is that what this is? So one of, one of these is an older... One of these is an older run than the other. Thanks, Nelson. That's a good idea. Disc collection tour. Yeah, that's weird, Drew. Innova's got some funky stuff going on with bubbles in their rims. Hey, Gavin. Um... Uh, the n newest disc I've been testing from a weird brand is the Habit from Plastic Addicts. It's a, it's a pretty crazy, glidey, large-diameter putter. <laughs> Sep. Oh, man. $20 Patreon tier provides a link to my OnlyFans that is also $20. That's classic. So the pink one is newer. Okay. Got it. Pink one's 2020. Something like that. Yeah, Zach, Sep is a little obsessed with the OnlyFans idea. Drew, I've not thrown an arrow. The, the habit does fly an awful lot like a Nova, but it, it doesn't, you know, a Nova feels so weird in the hand. The Habit feels so much better in my hand than a Nova does. Purple is older, 2019 or 2018. Okay. Hey, Disc Golf Nerd, how's it going, man? You remember digging the Zeppelin? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Nova's great. Uh, the, Nova's ability to stick, uh, stick to the ground in some pretty, uh, you know, weird angles and, and whatnot made it a really special disc. The Habit doesn't have that same quality of sticking. JC, no, I am not making my own bag. Um, I had a company reach out to me that, that they are looking to make a bag, and they're just asking for my opinion and um, I'm helping them gather in some data by getting some attention to 
that uh, survey is probably what you're what you're talking about. I don't have like you know my hands deep in the process or anything like that. Just doing a little bit of consulting. Zach saying he used to have the Nova stick to your hand and go offline. I definitely had an issue getting my fingers off of the Nova as well. <laughs> Wyatt, the Doth sack? Nah. I'm going to grab another drink, guys. I'll be right back. Mint Bobcat comes out tomorrow. What, in some new plastic or something? I've got a Bobcat. Somebody sent me a Bobcat. Yeah, Disc Golf Nerd. What, tell us, what is your next hot review? Nelson, yeah, you're not the only one. McMeth makes a lot of discs look incredible, just like the Nova. And then you get them in your hand and realize that it's not the disc, it's the thrower. You kind of want a bobcat, but you have 10 pines already. That's a lot of pines. HK, no, I don't have uh, anything against carts. In fact, I have, uh, I have a Rovic right now. And I've gone through a couple different Zookas in the past. And before that, I pushed some, like, three-wheel jogging strollers. And I had kitted out with coolers and all kinds of stuff. I'm definitely not against carts. Yeah, Dave, it's hard to get the release just right on the Nova. If you throw a full-size Ultimate Disc for, like, warming up, if you have a buddy, you can throw back and forth. That's a great way. If you can throw an Ultimate Disc hard and still have it fly smooth, then you're well on your way to being able to throw, release a Nova consistent, consistently. All right, guys, I'm winding down here. I've got a few other things I want to tackle. If you've got any other requests for seeing side-by-side -side pictures of discs or bag questions or anything like that, now's the time. Sep, yeah, I can do a side by side of side by side pick of the Hurricane to Habit. I don't think anyone else will be interested in that though. Big Red, thanks. I'll look for it in Slack. Thanks, Nelson. I appreciate that. You're welcome, guys. It's, it's fun for me too. This is stuff I'm doing anyways, and now I'm just realizing that other people are interested in it what as well. Tyler's streaming Mario Kart. Did he already start his stream up? <clears throat> or that's just what he's going to stream?
R093R. You're welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, everybody that's in, in uh, viewing right now, uh, go check out go check out Tyler. He's streaming. Let's all move over and hassle him. Let me pull up uh, his stream. I'll drop the link in here. Oh, what the heck? It won't. I can't type in my own chat. There's got to be a way. Okay, I just had to do it like this. There's a link to Tyler's stream. Let's all slide over. I'll be in Tyler's chat if you guys want to hang out. You're welcome, Drew, Zach, Sep, Dave, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it.